time that they're gonna do this thing right here and so it's their first time but then they're gonna um, they're gonna exercise the talent that the Lord has given them yeah, and yeah. I hope I hope church that we're gonna continue to to fan the spark that uh, we have created you know you fan you continue to fan that spark it will grow into uh, a bigger fire and then you continue to fan that I think um, if you can, if we continue to find that it will go into a wildfire. That's what we are praying for. Now, um, <clears throat> well, uh, I'd like to welcome our uh, friends. You know, uh, I'd like to uh, welcome Brother Walter. Brother Walter, right, right there back. Can you please wave your right hand? And we're doing Bible studies. You know, he was very interested. Uh, with the Sabbath and we've studied the Sabbath and he said, you know, uh, I accept the Sabbath, you know, God, it's a man, commandment man. from the Lord. Brother Walter, would you mind if you just introduce yourself to the congregation so they would know you? It's, a, uh, uh, it's Brother Donald's friend for many years. Amen. My name is Walter Town. I, uh, I come to Jonesboro as a youth at 17 and uh, I went to, to the university here. Uh, uh, went to graduate school at the University of Tennessee. Uh, I taught at the uh, ASU for, uh, as an adjunct for probably 20 years. Wow. And uh, I have a love for the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. When, I, when I talk with Daniel, which I've been known for some time, is that he pointed out to me that remember the sound and keep it holy. Amen. It's just as important as the other elect that we know that the, the, the Ten Commandments, the other nine. But uh, the, the thing is, is that um, uh, as I got more educated, it, was, it didn't make much sense to go somewhere else and create new bills. Mm -hmm. When I had some here, I just stayed here and paid once I had. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed here, and I know that God does things in order, decent and in order. Amen. No one, no one comes into your life by accident. Amen. 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 God is omniscient. He knows everything. And when he, when he, he never says, "Oops, I didn't know." <laughs> we do that, but He does. Yeah. So I'm very thankful to be here. I'm very thankful uh, to, to come and to fellowship and enjoy this. Day. Amen. And by the way, for those of you that might be wondering, you know, we we do the Bible study at his house, you know, every Thursday in the evening, and uh, we've uh, discussed a lot of topics already. And, and thank you, Walter, for uh, being here with us. That means a lot, you know. Um, and uh, I'd like also to welcome um, Sister Lily. Lily, you're welcome here. Can you please wave your hands to the Sister Lily? And uh, we all would like also to welcome, of course, Sharon. Right there, Sharon. And then we have Carlin. Carlin, right there. Okay, there you go. And then uh, Jabbar is right there in the back. Okay. And uh, let's pray for Jabbar. He will be needing a lot of prayers. Right? Okay, now, um, we'll now go to our song service. Okay? Yeah. Uh, will you please turn your hymn 
22, 185, Jesus is all the world to me.
please stand for the doxology. Thank uh-huh. 
The scripture reading today is Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not, be, do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He, shall, he will not leave you nor forsake you. I got here very early today. And uh, I was observing Steve, Stephen, and uh, he did an amazing job. So was my brother. So I know that um, this church is in good hands. Amen. 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 I want to praise God for that. Amen. Amen. As well, I guess. Amen. Amen. Anyway, so um, as most of you guys know, that I was born and raised in the Seventh Day Adventist Church here with you guys. So I, I mean, most of y'all are familiar faces. And um, so I know nothing else but the, the Sabbath. It's all I ever knew. But growing up with, um, well, you know what? There were a lot of kids here. Because I do remember BBS. We had those programs every summer. But eventually it all kind of stopped. You now uh, people's lives move on. So this church, instead of growing, it kind of it, it started to decrease. You know, uh, There wasn't a whole lot of people. At this church, um, but you know, I still had to make friends. I was, I was still out there, you know. But a lot of my friends were Catholic. You know, they were Sunday worshipers, so that means they did all their playing time on the Sabbath. You know, and I was a big soccer fan growing up. I loved soccer, um, but I couldn't go to those games. I only went to practices growing up, and that really hurt me a lot because. <clears throat> I thought to myself, why is it that they get to go and I don't? Why is it that I'm here at this church in the back pews just listening to the pastors speak and, you know, time moves on. By the time it's over, my friends are done, they're eating, you know, they're having a great time celebrating the win. And, uh, and I, there, actually, there was never a time that I went that I broke the Sabbath growing up. It's more when I was older. And, um, but I went to Ozark Adams Academy, and this is where my life really changed for the better. Amen. And, um, and it was a whole different experience. There really was. Um, I never met so many kids that were 70 Adventists just like me. Amen. And this church that I went to was across the campus. And it was so big, hundreds and hundreds of people. And it was the best time of my life going to that school. And, um, but there were a lot of bad kids too. But, and um, I wouldn't say that I was a bad kid, but I hung out with bad influences just as well as I did with the good. And uh, there was a one point where I um, did a few bad things as well at that school. And if you do something bad at that school, they don't really suspend you. They expel you. And I was so close to getting expelled. So I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to tell you everything that happened. Um, so prior to going to this school, I didn't really like to study. Um, but when I entered this school, I really had to study. Like These classes were super duper hard. And I was surrounded with a lot of smart kids. I mean, a few of them went to Ivy League school when we graduated. And um, so I really had to study. So I, I, I'd spend days and nights in the library. And my grades did get a lot better, thank God. They really did. But there was a point where during the finals, uh, me and a few friends started to snore some Xanax. Doing some things, you know, to wake us up. It wasn't really t for bad purposes, you know, but we got caught, and um, if you guys remember the lawyer that used to be here named Ted, he moved over there, and we asked for his help, and he helped us, and I stayed at that school, and um, there was not a whole lot of consequences for me, and uh, I do know that I was blessed, you know, with, with that, with not being expelled, because continuing on, um, well, let's just say that I made lifelong friends. And to, still to this day, I talk to them every single day. And uh, sadly, some of them don't go to church as much anymore. You know, they worry more about money. You know, real world problems nowadays. And um, 
It's, it's just funny how life, how life moves on. But I went from this, so I graduated from Ozark Downs Academy, and it was this protective uh, system, you know, I was protected. There wasn't a whole lot that we were able to do. So I still kept this mindset that I'm still going to Sabbath, I'm still studying the Bible, and by the way, we did have these religious classes. And um, something that you're not able to see at a public school in Jonesboro or anywhere else. I'll just tell you that much. Um, it's very hard to speak about God in uh, public school in public schools because people like to get offended, and it's just like, well, what? Why are you offended? Yeah. But um, that's just the way it is, and it's going to get worse. But um, now I'm going off topic. But um, yeah, so I did. I did graduate, and then I went to the University of Arkansas which is, at that point, was the number one party school in the nation. Okay? And, it, and it was. And it was. And this is when I started to kind of distance myself from God and started to uh, party pretty hard. You know, I, uh, I did a lot of drinking, but that wasn't really a problem. My biggest problem going to the University of Arkansas was more women, and uh, gambling. I loved to gamble. And the way that I gambled was playing pool. See, at Ozark, we had a pool table downstairs. And um, this is where it all kind of started. Plus, it started by Ozark. But it was very little gambling, you know, two, three dollars here, five dollars. We were very poor at that school. We didn't have no money. But when we did have money, the money that I would win, I'd buy a lot of meat. I'd buy meat just because they didn't serve me at that school. And it's, it's an Adventist school, you know. Um, not a lot of kids there, they weren't vegetarian. They were meat eaters. And we all had our own refrigerator. Me and your refrigerators in our dorm. Just stacked with meat. You know? So, uh, but when I entered University of Arkansas, there were a lot of kids who liked to gamble in clubs. And that's where I went. I was already 18. Wasn't able to drink. Although I did illegally, you know. But... Um, it, it started to get pretty bad. Um, you see, my mom and dad, they have a cleaning company. And they love me so much. And they love me too much that they'll give me a weekly check every single week when I was there. And I used that money, if I would win or to lose, I had to give up. And I did win a lot. I got very, very good at gambling. At one point, I won $3,000. And, um, well, what, what did I do with that money? Well, it's gone now. I mean, and one night I spent it on just, I don't even know, I don't remember. But as of right now, I don't do any, anything like that anymore. I don't gamble like that anymore. Amen. And I do know that the people that I was hanging out with, um, well, I, I, don't, I don't talk to them no more. I do know that God was there with me the whole time. Amen. He really Amen. was. And um, even though that I didn't reach out to him, he was out with me. Amen. And, um, and it really hurts, you know, because I, I, I feel like I should have been a better Christian, you know. I went to church only one time that whole year. Two times that whole year. And I've never in my life done that. Never. But when I came back here, home, started going to church, you know, starting to read the Bible a little bit more. Not as much as I'm supposed to, but still better than where I was in the University of Arts. Amen. And, uh... Um, well, I, I do also know that you guys are also there to help us out, help me out, and uh, and my, my parents are my, my biggest supporters. Although they're not here, they're, they're in Mexico. I do know that they're praying for us, uh, for me and Brandon as well. Amen. And um, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Amen. And for hearing my little testimony. Amen. Man, good morning, church. Good morning. Alex just applauded me because I don't know if I got the courage to say, but I'm finna say, but I'm gonna try. All right. Um, same thing with Alex. You all know me. My name's Steven. I was born to the Seventh-day Adventist Church to Don and Kumba, my 
two loving parents who sometimes I question how much they love me. You know, it's beside the point. Um, man, my whole life, that's the same as everything. All I've known is the Sabbath, the seven day Adventist church. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. I never really ever questioned my faith in God or the Sabbath or going to church on Saturday till about fifth grade. And I remember distinctly because it involved food. I'm, I love food. We were at a Christmas party, and a buddy of mine, one of my closest friends at the time, had planned to have another Christmas party at his house on a Saturday in the afternoon. And uh, at the time, I'm like, yes. His mom loves to cook food. It's going to be a party. Last time he had a birthday party, it was the greatest thing. We had a nerve battle. Tons of fun. So I'm already thinking this is going to be a great Saturday. Blank, my brain is totally blocked out. Like, hey, you know you got to be in church on Saturday. Your, your parents won't go for that. But. So I go home. I think this was a Tuesday. I go home. Don't mention it. Don't mention it until about Friday evening. I think our dad had called us in for worship. And I'm, we're going through. We're going, at the time, this is our first time reading the Bible. And we read through the Bible a couple times. I think it's uh, I think we're in I think we actually would have been in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Yeah, we might have been. But I remember him saying something about church. And I said, like, oh, by the way, I have a party at a friend's house tomorrow. So I'm not gonna be at church. My dad kind of looked at me, my siblings <laughs> looked at me. It was that look of who is that guy? What is he talking about over there? I was like, what? And I'm looking back that way. Well, I have plans. I have things I must be doing on Saturday that I can't attend church. Needless to say, next Saturday morning, I had a sizable welt on my butt, and I was in a pew. Learned my list, you know. And that was the first. My friend, he was, he was not pleased that I did not show up. We were best friends at the time. My parents know his name, Michael. He's like, why don't you have my word, man? You were supposed to be there. I'm like, oh. Things happen, and right, I should have said I had to go to church. I didn't. I started cooking, and that's when I started the biggest sin in my life, lying. <laughs> Man, if you were to ask my parents, what is my worst thing? They would tell you I can lie like 40 going south on the eastbound train. <laughs> I tell you. And that lie right there, the lie I told that day, I can't remember it. I couldn't tell you what I told them. But I know it wasn't the truth. I did not tell him I was in church. I did not tell him I was seven day Adventist. But he, he took it. He accepted it. He's like, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. And I was like, man. <laughs> I was always told the truth would set me free, but this lie just got me out of my friend's head. This is great. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm keen on to that. A couple weeks later, not, not even a couple of years later, I had a teacher. <coughs> Named Miss Tyree. Miss Tyree is one of those teachers that's really good for a student, you know, because uh, for students who don't like to study, she's going to make sure things get done. And your grades will always reflect that you didn't study. So after I racked up about six C's straight, she's like, I need you to take this one home, get it signed by your mom. No, it's not happening. So I devised a brilliant plan. I'm going to forge my mother's signature. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was either her or dad's, and dad's was in cursive, so that was not an option. So I'm like, yeah, forge your mom's signature. No sweat. I didn't even know that forgery is a crime. Did you guys know that? Forgery is a crime. It is a crime. So on top of sinning, I'm already sinning in line. Let's just add crime to it, you know? No sweat. So I forge my mom's signature. Miss Tyree takes it. I'm like, <sighs> bullet dodge. Coincidentally, we searched our cubbies that day, where I'd stuffed all six seeds that she had given me to take to my mom before. All of them were found. And she's like, I'm calling your mother. I said, well, my mom's gone to work for today, so she news. And I was not giving her that phone number for nothing. It wasn't happening. So, I don't remember how it all went down, but dad had told mom she needs to go to the school because someone wrecked me. 
<coughs> I said, parents got beacons. They got, they got something. Oh, yeah. They got something. Y'all got something. I don't know what it is. But mama come home from work. She's like, I'm coming to that school today. I'm like, oh, yeah. We'll see if you can get there before I get out of it. So I get to class. It's like 8 30 in the morning. And I'm, I've been scheming since 7 that morning how I'm going to get out of here before mom gets here. Because I know she got to run all my other students to school. So I'm like, I got 30 minutes to have to leave. I come up with a brilliant plan. Eat my eraser off my pencil. Make myself throw up. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The alternative was my mom finding out the truth. Could not happen. So I'm looking at the eraser and I'm like, this is a terrible idea. And I just think to what will happen if I'm found out. I eat the eraser. <laughs> so it takes about 20, 30 seconds. Sure enough, I turn over. Trash can just as coincidentally this. Uh, I sit by the trash can, just pure coincidence. I'm spewing. Good. Teacher sends me to the nurse's office. She gives me a bag. I walk out the hallway and I'm like, I did it. I did it. I'm scot free. I already took my backpack. I turn the corner. I'm face to face with my mom and the principal. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I'm just you. <laughs> Needless to say, that Saturday, I was in church. <laughs> so I was a little on but. <laughs> but yeah. So as a kid, I'd already started sinning, and the biggest one was lying off the bat. Fast forward to about seventh grade, and uh, I'm I've always played sports, and uh, every sport I could get in my hand, any sport my parents could find in Jonesboro, they put me in. Played basketball, football, tennis, track. If it's sport, I probably play. It. Let's just say that. So, I think the time was basketball. It was football season. Football season. First year playing football for the school. It was a big deal. And no, it's not. Yeah, first year. The school is uh, our school. As much as like religion is like frowned upon in public schools, our school does not deprive athletes from religion. So, we have this big organization that's uh, like national wide called Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And so uh, at the time, I was the only seven-day Adventist in the entirety of the Nettleton Junior High School. Mm -hmm. We're talking like 700 students, and I'm, I'm it, numero uno. So they call us all to the cafeteria one day, and they say, hey, we want you guys to invite your church to this Fellowship of Christian Athletes event, run through this big shindig, it's going to be great. And everybody, I looked around for the first time, I kind of questioned if the seven-day was the right day to go to church. Because everywhere I look, there's like 20 kids at a table, 30 kids at a table, 50, not 50, but 10 kids at another table. And here's me, sitting all my moments, and I'm just, I'm like, cool, cool. Again, I like to sit near the back of areas. So uh, about halfway through the plans for this, I kind of just slipped out, went back to class. I didn't think much of it. And um, I don't remember how, but someone... I ended up meeting someone who uh, was involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And they're like, hey man, I saw you were in the cafeteria, but you left us. Is everything okay? I said, oh yeah, yeah, I just thought it was like for football, football. I didn't think it was like a Christian thing. I just, I just left. He's like, oh, okay, well, he said, do you not have a church? I was like, oh, well, I, I, I have a church. A church? He said, good, what church? That line instinct kicked in again. <laughs> Because I was like, if I tell him it's seven day Adventist church, he's going to be like, invite hey, your church. I was like, I don't mind inviting my church, but I mean, if I'm going to be the only kid there, it's going to be me and my brothers, Alex. At the time, it was me and my brothers, Alex, uh, Dylan and Gabby Richmond, and Pastor Tesh. So, we're going to seven of us at the most. I was just like, yeah. So I was like, what else? I think I said I went to Central Baptist. <laughs> he's like, oh, good. You guys in. I already got to talk to everybody. You're good. Good deal. Good deal. I'll see you at the event. I'll see you there. Didn't go to the event. Didn't go. So up until that point, all my lives had been innocent little white lies, you know, trying to just get myself out of a little tight situation where I didn't want to tell the truth. Made, made, telling the truth made me uncomfortable in that situation. In ninth, tenth grade, I started lying to do some, like, not bad things, but do things I definitely sh should have asked my parents for permission for. 
And some of these things I'm going to tell you now, Mom and Dad, y'all don't know. So keep in mind, we're grown, I survived, we're past <laughs> All right, so uh, the biggest, one of the biggest ones was ninth grade. A group of friends and I who lived, at, who were in our neighborhood. There was this house. It was beat. Like, we'd all shared the windows on it. They remodeled it since then, but it, it was two stories tall. And we, in our neighborhood, we had all sorts of stories about it. An axe murderer that lived there. A man who murdered his wife that lived there. A woman who murdered her husband lived there. A whole family massacre. We had stories for days about this house. <laughs> we didn't know why it looked the way it did, but we know it was bad looking, and ghosts had to be inside. So I'm like, so one night, uh, one not a night, one day, we're all playing basketball in our neighborhood, and one of my buddies says, no, we should spend the night in that house <laughs> and document it. And I'm like, what? Great idea. I'm all for it. It's like, how are we going to do it? How are we going to, whose parent in their right mind will let you spend the night in a dilapidated house? No. Okay. So automatically, boom, time to lock. It's, I've gotten so comfortable with it over the years. That, at the time, I got so comfortable with it over the years that it was second nature. I'm giving out lives to my friends so that they can use them to, with their parents. So once I got everybody else's life situated, I create mine. At the time, we had a best friend who our parents, parents have met his parents multiple times. Parents have been over, we all gone places, we gone to different cities together. CJ, y'all know. I'm telling the parents that part. But uh, I say, hey, mom, dad, can I spend the night at CJ's house? Sure, no question that. Well, they said, did Mr. Wayne say yes? I'm going to say yes. So, sure. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock hits. I walk. Clear, clear across the street to CJ's house. They see me walk to CJ's house. I never touched CJ's door. The moment I got to the front door, I beelined to the edge of his house and straight across, because across, it's weird. His house is also perfect, like straight across to the house that we were going to spend the night in. So I hit that and I walk, and boom, I'm over there. And right when I get to that front door, I kid you not, I hear like a ghostly scream, and I know I was the first one there because everybody said they were going to be there by 11. I was the only, I was supposed to be the only one there. Something could have, it could have been my friends inside tricking me. So I'm like, okay, no way it's real. I open the door, I walk in. I'm looking around. It stinks in this place, by the way. It was, oh God. It was like, so what's, what's that stuff? Mold, yes. Mold, asbestos. All over. I'm like, this is a terrible idea. Like, where are we gonna sleep? Bad. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just like walking around on my own. And uh, like I said, had stairs. So I step on the first step. Sturdy enough. So I'm like, okay, rest of be fine. I'm climbing. I hit like the fifth step. My hole goes through. My not hole. My foot goes through. So I'm stuck. So I'm like, I catch myself. I'm like, oh. It's just an old house. So I pull my foot back out, kind of look down, don't see nothing, it's dark, so I keep walking. I got my flashlight, my flash on my phone, but keep walking. I'm careful though, I get upstairs, the rest of the stuff didn't break, thankfully, because what happens next was well, not good. Um, so in this house, there's like three rooms on the top floor. I walk down the hallway to the farthest room, and I turn into it, it's on the right. And I didn't notice it at the time, but part of the door frame had broken. And it, I guess it had cracked all the way up to the ceiling or something. So me opening the door somehow caused parts of the roof to start falling down. Mm. One good. Something else I did not tell y'all before I started the story. I'm the world's biggest scaredy cat at the time. <laughs> I am terrified of the slightest thing. Only reason I agreed to this was the heat of the moment, you know, peer pressure. It's a dangerous thing, kids. Don't fall to it. So peer pressure, and I'm like, oh my God, I know there's no one else in here. It's time to run. <laughs> so I turn the corner and straight across my room, to this day, I will say it was a ghost. 
You can't convince me otherwise it's not a ghost. I screamed. I'm screaming bloody murder. I'm screaming. I'm crying. And the one, I hit the steps. I hit the steps. I'm flying like 90 miles an hour. I hit the steps. I trip over that step where I originally had the hole in it. Tumble down. I can't be bothered with that right now. I get up. I keep running. I get all the way back to my house. For, oh yeah, I ain't going. I ain't going to see that. <laughs> Screw the lie. Man, I'll, I'll figure out another lie when I get inside. I got a ghost on. I I can't be worried about that right now. You know. So I'm like, I finally take a moment to like catch my breath. I, I see my. I kind of like look at myself in the reflection of one of my parents' vehicles. I'm like, oh, I'm dirty. So I start brushing dirt off. Best I can. Get everything off me. I'm like, okay, calm down. Get a grip. You gotta come up with another lie. I don't even remember what I told him. Probably told him that something happened. I just decided to come home. I missed home. I don't know. But uh, that was more of a danger to me than it was to anybody else. Fast forward about. I have to tell you all the lies I told in high school, but gosh, we'll be here all day. <laughs> I truly would. But, uh,. Yeah, lying, man, it was, it was getting pretty bad. I mentioned earlier in Sabbath school, part of me stealing all that, the toys from the store, lying. My parents were acting where I got them. <coughs> Who knows what I told them. So, yeah, I can't remember. But uh, one of the biggest lies that I ever told, I actually got one of my buddies hurt. And I felt, and that was the first time I was like, man, this is one of those things you got to stop doing. And long story short, I mean, I basically said something wasn't my fault. And it really wasn't, but I was partially involved. And I said I had no involvement. <coughs> and uh, he ended up, somebody was looking to fight somebody that day. And he ended up being the one who got hit. So I, I felt terrible about it. And this started me down another path of wanting to fight people. Also not good. God says don't be quick to anger. And I know I've gone long, long off the topic of growing up as a seven-day Adventist, but now I'm kind of, here's how I'm going to try to come, here's me coming back to that. So I'm doing all this lying, and now I'm starting to fight people. And the whole time, I'm still going to church. For a while there, our parents had us doing uh, special music, so me and my brothers would get up here and sing. I got baptized. I'm still doing bad stuff. Nothing's changed. And now to top it all off, I think it was about 11th, 12th grade, where I just like, for some reason we stopped coming to church. I just stopped thinking about God in a lot of things. You know? And I feel like part of it was so easy to forget because it was just so much easier just to forget about like, not forget God, but forget being a seven-day Adventist and observing things as the Sabbath, this, that, because there was no other youth around me, you know. Our, our sermons, our sermons title was You're Not Alone. It was never geared toward you're alone in your faith of anything. It was simply supposed to be you're not alone as a seven-day Adventist. And our message is growing up as a seven-day Adventist child in different schools, you know. So I was just, I was... I got to the point where I was scared to tell people. I was always, my majority of my lives were derived from the sole fact that I was scared to be honest with myself and with others that I am seven day events. I didn't want to tell people that. I told a couple of people here and there, and they always like to bring up Waco, Texas. <laughs> one bad incident, one, one bad incident. Jesus. Everybody's got bad moments. But that's not a reflection of the seven day events church. That's an experience, you know? So, uh, man, it was just, it was like, so I, was, I got to a point where I didn't tell anyone I was Sunday Adventist because I didn't like people asking me questions about it. Well, why didn't you go to church on the Sabbath? Well, everybody else goes to church on Sunday. Why don't you just go on Sunday? You just make it inconvenient for everybody. Why can't you be there? And it got to a point where my friends, did, I was, my siblings referred to me as a social dragon as in comparison to a social butterfly because I seemed to get along with everybody. I used to get invited to parties all the time. But they were always Saturday, and my parents were not having it. More so for the fact that it was, 
I would like to say it was for the party's sake, but it was probably for the fact it was happening on Saturday. So naturally, my friends stopped inviting these things. And I was like, man, when did, I mean, it would be more convenient if we did go to church on Sunday. I thought that sometimes, you know. But it was like I said, it was easier for me to just be like, ah, I'm not a Sunday Adventist. I'm, I don't tell people I'm Sunday Adventist. I know I'm Sunday Adventist, but I don't tell anybody else. So it was easy. I feel like a lot of Christians, we let that ease, the ease of just going with what the world says, we let that overwhelm or overcome our sense of belonging to the church. Where was but yeah, that I feel that plays big, that played a, a significant role in me in coming back to God because it got to this point in 12th grade, no 11th grade. I met, I was at track meet, and I I don't know, some some was weird that day. I didn't know I've been. I always pray before every athletic thing I do because I'm convinced something bad could happen in, in my life or it could change how I live forever. So I always pray. And at the time, I did pole vault. And if any of you have seen pole vault, that's a world of danger. So I meet this kid. We're all, it's a group of us talking. And somehow we get on the topic of church. So everybody else is like Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, all these, all these other denominations I've heard of, Catholic. Um, and for some reason, that day, I'm like, I feel comfortable. I said, yeah, I'm seven day Adventist. <laughs> I didn't think much of it at the time. I, and I think part of it was I was so locked in on what I was going to do because I was gonna, it was my turn to jump the bar, the pole, and everything. And uh, I didn't clear it that time because of my mind had just completely went off topic because I kid you not, for the first time in my life, I heard someone else say, I'm that day Adventist. As a youth, I was like, wait, what? Some kid from Pocahontas, to this day, I never, I never got his name. I never got his name. Never got his name, but. Uh, that shocked me. I was like, wait, you're telling me there's other shit down there? Like, oh, oh, this is news to me. I was like, this is great. Yeah, it was, it was, it was something else. And I, it's not like I started to find more Seven Day Adventists after that. No. I, I don't think I found three more people between that and probably today. today. But it was that one moment that made me was like, man, I mean, he said it, I said it. No one said anything. What's, why not? Why not? Just say it. And if people got something to say, just, you know. So going into 12th grade year, man, story's long. Going into 12th grade year, I, I've been playing football all since seventh grade. But I wouldn't, I've been bouncing around different positions. I never found a position that fit. And one day I was just so fed up with not starting like I wanted to be. That I broke, I'm like, I'm busting the tears when I got home from practice because I practiced for two hours and I know good and well I'm probably not even going to start this season. It's my senior year. And I, and I rarely pray outside of like competition itself for like relation to sports, but I prayed for the first time about a sports position like that. And I was like, God, wherever I need to be on this football field, please point me in that direction because I don't know what to do anymore. I'm tired of being on the bench. I don't like it. And I remember the next day I ended up going to defense. I played defense. I had a great season playing defense. So I graduate college, uh, graduate high school. I'm going now, and like, for me personally, life had gotten a lot better as I started to claim that I'm seven day Adventist. Now. I wasn't hiding from nobody. I didn't feel any type of way about it. It was good. And I feel like as we go through our lives and stuff, it's easier. And I feel like as I got older, it was easier for me to say because I was. I'm, I'm, I became my own person. I wasn't dependent on what people thought about me to uh, keep going through life. As I got older, I realized you live your life as yourself. You run your own race at your own pace. You know? Amen. You can't be worried about what people are going to say about you. There's always going to be naysayers, doubters, people who don't agree with your viewpoint. That's right. But if you let public opinion sway you from anything you believe in, especially God, it's going to be a slippery slope from there. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that we go about our day-to-day -day that we will remember you and everything you do. 
Let you continue to be with us. Please continue to ground protect us all and keep us safe. Be with our family members and friends all around the world. And help us to remember you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. church 
two, three years ago, only one side was full, not even. And now both sides are. And I want to thank you, Lord, for um, just blessing this church and uh, blessing me and Steve, Stephen and uh, giving us the words to speak, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.